Cash. Welcome back to CBS Sports Eye on College Basketball Podcast, where we sometimes discuss camel fighting dodo birds and leaky black. Matt Norlander is here with me. If you're watching on YouTube, go ahead and smash that like button like your brain to Dave. If you have consent, you know what he would do. And if you haven't yet subscribed to the YouTube channel, please knock that out while you're here. And while you're doing it, let me remind you what we've been doing oh. this whole summer. It's called the Summer Shoot Around. Never mind, it's not even summer anymore. It doesn't matter. It's a series during which we focused on 20 notable teams over a span of 10 weeks. Two per week, 20 teams in 10 weeks. Mm -hmm. We did the schools in alphabetical order. I'll be honest, I thought we were done after Villanova, but then we decided to auction off a 21st episode of the Summer Shoot Around with the proceeds from the episode benefiting St. Jude Children's Research Hospital in Memphis, Tennessee. How do you not do anything for St. Jude Children's Research Hospital for crying out loud? That place is amazing. And so the winner of the auction, it was Bellarmine University from the Atlantic Sun, Scott Davenport's Knights. They went 20 and 13 last season at an 11 and 5 mark in the league. Just their second season at the Division One level. They won the A-Sun tournament, but they weren't allowed to play in the NCAA tournament because they're still transitioning to, to division one. So let's stop. Let's stop here for a minute. Okay. They're like, are you in favor of this transitioning period for schools moving to division one that prohibits uh, them from playing in the NCAA tournament or even the NIT for a period of time, even if they qualify? Because I hate it. I think it's ridiculous. Yeah, I'm in. I'm in favor of it, actually. Um, I'm, Why would you be in favor? Of that? I, you know what? I'm, I'm feeling a little nihilistic here on a Monday morning in October. We are opening a show with Bellerman, this backfired. But listen, we're all too happy. I don't know, my phrase might be a little over overboard. We are, uh, we are indebted and must oblige the winner of our contest. So Bellerman, shouts to you and uh, and all the people, all the Bellerman fin fans listening to this uh, this podcast. There are dozens of us. Dozens. Yeah, exactly. Thank you, Tobias Fumke. Where were you, Illinois? Where were you, Dayton fans? Where were you, San Diego State? Where were you, Michigan State fans? We're happy to talk Bellerman. This was a curveball, okay? I didn't quite see this coming, but for St. Jude, anything we... And by the way, if you're watching on YouTube, we are, hey, YouTube. We're rocking. Hey, we are rocking the Bellerman stuff. We are good to our word. We put it up for... Our, and you know what? We do a summer shoot around in 23. Maybe we auction off the 21st episode again get a little more pub for it and see which ticked off fan base wants to donate the most to uh, to help out charity and help out St. Jude's. As for this rule, and if you think we aren't loaded with Bellerman info and until you are greatly mistaken, we are getting to the mailbag, but we must deal with these nights first. Um, it's used in large part as a as a deterrent to everyone trying to get into Division One to qualify for the NCAA Hold, tournament. Who's not in Division One at this point? Literally, I mean, uh, I mean, like, like 700 it, schools. There is no if, if, if it's if the if the root of it is to be a deterrent, That's once what. you realize it doesn't deter anything, maybe don't have it. Like uh, it's how do we know it doesn't. If it wasn't there, would D1 be 700 schools right now? We're oh, at 363. God, who, what is the difference between 363 and 700 practically speaking? Like uh, who cares? It's almost double. Like, who cares? I mean, mathematically speaking, that's almost double the amount. At, at this point, who cares? If, if you go from 363 to 700, who cares? Who cares? It's, I do. It's way too many schools. What? 363 is way too many. We we, we crossed way too many it decades ago. It is. It is. Yeah, I, just, so, I, I feel like you're a Division One team. You you qualify for the NCAA. You do what you, what you, in theory, have to do to qualify for the NCAA tournament. You should be in the NCAA tournament, period. Well, they're going to have to wait at least two more years because this ridiculous. is their third season Outrageous. of Division One. They actually this this issue went to vote to the board of directors over the summer to reduce it. I think down to two years, which still Bellerman would not have qualified because last season was its second season. It did win the A Sun tournament, uh, but that failed. So it, it, still, you have a four year period of transition. You are eligible now in your fifth year as a D one member institution. By the way, mm. how about this for Kismet? Were you aware of this? I'm, Bellerman, aware of, you. I'm aware of everything. Okay. You are aware of this. What's the significance of today? Today's October 3rd. Yeah. What does that mean? What does that mean in the Bellerman universe? Oh, this the, today is the, mm. today's October 3rd. And so in the Bellerman universe, yeah, I feel like mm. maybe it's Pedro Bradshaw's birthday. It's not, but I know you're very desperate to talk about Pedro Bradshaw. In fact, Bellerman, relatively young, young university here, founded in 1950. On this day, this on is this the day. 72nd anniversary 
of Bellarmine University's founding. This very day, as we record this podcast, Monday, October 3rd. We did not plan this, by the way. Completely coincidental. Um, but here we are talking about Bellarmine U, which was a D2 powerhouse, by the way. Won the 2011 national title. For about 10 years, it was just steamrolling in the tournament only won one national title but it was making multiple final fours getting uh deep into it and then four final fours in a seven year span from 2011 to 2017 scotty davenport running the show down there by the way it really is the a sun you talk about them being in the a sun it's outrageous i'm gonna use a gp term it's outrageous it is a sun has 14 teams this is a one bid league this was an eight team league as recently as four years ago for the better part of the 2010s the a sun it knew its place it was an eight school conference there are 14 schools in this league new to the league austin p central arkansas eastern kentucky jacksonville state and queens another school not that queens queens of not as home city of charlotte they just joined in so there are 14 teams in the a sun the a sun walking around acting like they're the big 10 in the sec What's going on <laughs> they're just trying to eat everybody up wait till they get a an automatic qualifier in the college football playoff. Yeah, right. Or know that's teams. coming. Oh boy. All right. Load load us up on uh on your Bellarmine Intel and knowledge here before we get to the mailbag. Can we get out of the Bellarmine segment in 15 minutes? That's my question. Oh, probably not. Definitely not. I'm doing it, I'm doing at least seven minutes on their home arena. Do you know where Bellarmine plays at their home games? I, it's uh, home games. How about this? Yes, I do. Here's the fun fact about it. They mm-hmm. play their home games. Where Louisville used to play, Freedom Hall, that's a beloved venue for sure for Cards fans. Uh, but here's what's intriguing about it. If Duke is the biggest program to play in the smallest arena, Bellarmine, GP, as you know, is the inverse. It's a school with sub-4,000 total enrollment <laughs> playing in an arena that could fit the student body five times over. <laughs> Freedom, Freedom Hall, this is per Ken Palm is the 12th largest venue in college basketball and is Bellarmine's home arena. I love this. I, I, I was raised on Freedom Hall. What are you talking about? There we go. I was raised on Freedom Hall. I know all about Freedom Hall. I had no idea Bellarmine played inside Freedom Hall. I had no idea basketball was even still being played inside Freedom Hall until I, until I took a deep dive. Yeah, the Knights, I got, I got some rough news for you. Lost the top three scores from last season's team, including Dylan Penn. C.J. Fleming, well, those two guys average 16.6 points per game, 15.5 points per game. Bringing back nobody who averaged more than 7.6 points per game last season. Mm. That's tough. BartTorvik.com. Oh, boy. You want a trivia time? I have no idea. I didn't look. Were they were there projected in the overall? Trivia time. Can I, can I get it within 30? Let's see if I can get it within 30. I did not look. Uh, okay. 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 So I'm going to give you two trivia times. Okay. Where is... Bellarmine projected at BartTorvik.com and then specifically in the Atlantic Sun. By the way, I have if you think we aren't doing Bellarmine over under, you're sadly mistaken. And I've got some over under stuff we got to tend to as well before we get to the mailbag. All right. Um 14 team A Sun. Mm-hmm. I'll blindly say Bellarmine's eighth in Torvik. That's not low enough. Wow. Ten. That's not low enough. Get out of here. This is disrespectful. Disrespect. This is disrespectful. Scotty Davenport is on the precipice of crossing 400 career wins. He's going to do it. He's probably going to do it in November. And this is this it's disrespectful. It's disrespectful to the history of the program. Uh, 12th, and to Scotty Davenport. 12th out of 14. 12th 11th, out of 11th, 11th out of 14. That's great. And so knowing that, ay, 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 I'll say... I'll say 11th out of 14 in the A Sun and Torvik gets you to 293 in the overall rankings. That's really uh, pretty close. 268. That's uh, higher than I thought there. Ugh, boy, it's rough. But we're previewing them. They need to. They... Okay. Counter argument to this disrespect. Guess where the Knights were picked in the A Sun in their first season at the Division I level? Uh, last dead last. They went ten and three in the league, finished second behind only Liberty. So the Knights have proved their haters wrong before, and I suspect they'll do it again. They have the, hit, the history, of course they do. Okay. Uh, 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 tops among them, BartTorvik.com. <laughs> Fair enough. Put them at the top of the list. Yes, yes. 
So they proved their haters wrong before, and I suspect they'll do it again. That's what the history of Scott Davenport tells us. Now, is there a Pedro Bradshaw on this team? No. Can you inform the people about Pedro Bradshaw? He was the leading scorer and face of the program as it transitioned to Division One basketball. Obviously. He, yeah, that, that team that just overachieved, picked to finish last, instead of finish second, Pedro Bradshaw was the heart of that. Now, is there an obvious Pedro Bradshaw on this roster? If I'm being honest with you, I don't think so. But if somebody can emerge as a modern-day Pedro Bradshaw, then maybe we, maybe we got something. They open at Louisville. I noticed. I love that. Louisville's going to play in its home arena as a road game. Wait, no. Louisville's going to be in its home arena. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, what? I can't imagine Kenny Payne's going to Freedom Hall for his first game. No, you want to. Hey, listen. Former player there. Cut his teeth as a player at he Freedom Hall. Maybe you wanted to just, you know what? For old time's sake. He what? should go to Freedom Hall. They should, actually. Yeah. The, the, yeah. the team that calls it Freedom be, Hall. It would be a home game for Louisville if they played at Freedom Hall. The The... The team that calls Freedom Hall home will open its season at Louisville. Think about that. If you have somebody tried to tell you that in the mid-80s. That's a little rough. But you know what? I do like the fact that's happening, and they also have Kentucky on the schedule there. UCLA, uh, Clemson, Duke. Scott uh-huh. Davenport's not shying away from scheduling. They, they, they listen. They've, they've, got some, they've got some big ones on the, uh, on the schedule there. But, yes, they uh, losing Fleming and Penn. Um, Dylan Penn went to Vermont, by the way. They combined, you know, 32 points, seven boards, seven assists a season ago. Those are huge holes to fill. I feel like the team's probably going to take a step back this season. I have to note, I adore you for approaching this Bellarmine segment in many ways with a similar template to the other 20 teams that we did. <laughs> I, just, I think it's wonderful. Trivia time? Let's go. What radio host once coached Bellarmine from 1995 to 1998? That's got to be Bob Valvano. How about that? There we go. I might have looked at the all-time coaching records before we did this. I might have. Don't give me credit for that one because I I did. I learned it in the previous 24 hours. Um, they've got this guy, Kurt Hopf. Seems like a future all-league player, right? If he stays with the program long enough, doesn't transfer out. Uh, one of the best freshmen in the league last season. And then they've got Alec Freem, who's going to come back after injuring his hip. He missed the final 10 to 12 games. Justin Betts will also be back. A new face to know. GP already knows it. Peter Suter, freshman wing, might be uh, might be a starter there. And then they've got this other fresh, uh, or he's a he was a fresh uh, freshman who projects. Ben Johnson last year was in high school and was like one of the best scores in all of Kentucky high school basketball. So maybe he'll be in the starting lineup as well. Um, but I don't know, GP. I we're gonna get to the over hundred here in a second. But when I see that schedule. When I see there might not be a Pedro on this roster, it's, it's, tough. Hard for me, it's hard for me to get too enthusiastic about the Knights. It's tough. It's tough. Now, be skeptical of Scott Davenport's Knights at your own risk. Mm. They've been proven haters wrong for more than a decade now. But you lose Dylan Penn. Who can lose Dylan Penn and CJ Fleming in the same year and just like keep it rocking and rolling where they were? Eh. It's the question that's been looming over the sport for the past five months. This is what people have been talking about. That's right. It's something we probably should have included in our Candid Coaches series. That's well, our bad. That's on us. That is on us. I will I will accept the responsibility for that's that. That's on us. I, I'm not even I'm not saying it's on it's not even on you. It's not on us. It's on me. That's on me. That's on me and only me. Over under. You got more if you got more on the roster, fire away before I get to this over under. I just like saying Pedro Bradshaw over and over again. PDB. All right, here's the deal. Um, in some w- walks of my life, I'm a completist. Are you a completist in any way? Do you have completist tendencies? What does that mean? Define that, please. A completist is someone who engages in something, a hobby, and needs to uh, finish it off. If you're a completist uh, and you like watching television shows, you would have a very hard time not finishing a show, even if you didn't like it. Or if you're a completist and you love a certain artist, you have to own every single physical piece of like official studio material they've ever released or stuff like that. So if you're a completist, you just like to, uh, you know, make sure there's, there's no missing pieces in something that you have an affinity for. I think I'm not a completist. I think I'm an incompletist. Okay. Because I give up on TV shows all the time. Like uh, Handmaid's Tale. Watch like two seasons. 
Then she ran back in. She like got out, then ran back in. I was like, you know what? That doesn't make any sense to me. I'm done with I, this. I never haven't seen an episode. So, OK, that's good to know. Are you a completist with your Mets? Do you need to watch every Mets game? Oh, do you God. need to follow or watch? I listen. I, we're not we're not careening off the the Royals here, but do you either need to watch or follow? So on the phone, every single Mets game. Are you a Mets completist? As long as they're still in contention. Yes, absolutely. I would say if you're a completist, it doesn't matter if they're in contention or not. If they're a bad well, team, the, you have to watch. No, I, I mean, I, I'll have it on, but I don't because it'll be, you know, DeGrom's pitching or they brought a prospect up. Like I remember a few years ago, they bring up uh, Ahmed Rosario when they, I think, weren't in contention. But it was like, hey, they brought up this shortstop prospect, so I'll watch because of him. But uh, as long as they're in contention, I watch. If they're out of contention, I can, you know, I can do other things. All right. The reason why I bring up uh, yeah, I was wondering. being a completist is that we started this summer shoot around and beginning at the Duke episode, we did over-unders. So there are some schools that we didn't do that it's bugging me that we didn't do. So we're going to do over-unders for Bellarmine and then oh, the no. six. I got everything. We're going to roll through it real quick. I got it all. OK, first of all, Bellarmine. Bellarmine, what's going to be their regular season win total going into the ASUN tournament? How many wins is this team going to have? 40. I got my number. Do you want me to go first? Yes, because I'm I got to do some research on that. <laughs> OK, I'm going to say Bellarmine's going to take a step back. It's going to be a sub 500 season for Scotty Davenport. And they're going to go 15 and 16. Give me 15 wins for the Bellarmine Knights in 22, 23. I would never predict Bellarmine to go under 500. That's outrageous behavior. I'm feeling outrageous on a Monday. Yeah. So I'll do, uh, I'll do seven. I'll do 18. Oh yeah. 18 and 13. Is that where I'm at? 18 and 13 would be where you're at heading yep. into the ace in tournament. Okay. And Before, then they win it and then they win it again. Oh gosh. And then they're left out again for reasons that make no sense to anybody other than you and the people who continue to put these stupid rules in place. All right. Real quick here. Six schools over unders real. Quick. I already got my numbers here. Alabama. They're going to go at hey, props to Alabama. You know what? Hold on a second. You know, it's been too long here. Let's get a little. Oh, yeah, let's get a little bumper music for the over unders, baby. Oh no! Let's go, Alabama. They're gonna they're gonna play at South Alabama. Props to Nate Oates going at South Alabama. I By the way, it. you you guys see what happens when I don't play in the podcast, right? <laughs> here, here we are. We got bumper music and we're doing over unders for teams that got nothing DK to do with what we're talking about. Michigan State, then Oregon or UConn, then either North Carolina or Nova. Then they're at Houston. They're gonna play Memphis versus Gonzaga and Birmingham and at Oklahoma. Alabama over under. I'm going 20 wins for the tide. 20 and 11 for the tide in the SEC. PK 85. Roadies at Houston at Oklahoma. Going to play Memphis, Gonzaga, and Birmingham. Over under GP. Here we go. Let's go. Mm, 21 and 10. All right. Arizona. Five games of note. They're going to be in Maui and play Cincinnati. Then they got Ohio State or San Diego State. The other side of the bracket is Creighton, Texas Tech, and Arkansas. They're going to play Indiana and Vegas. Tennessee is the return to Tucson. They're going to play Ark. Uh, then that's it. That's it. Arkansas is next. Um, it's not that many games. No, only five for Arizona. Maybe an indication that Tommy Lloyd isn't so ambitious about his team in season two. There isn't, listen, Maui's a beast, but there's no roadie here. I'm going to go 22 and nine. For Arizona. I'll go slightly higher. 24 Ooh. and 7. Do they win Maui? Yes or no? Who else is in Maui? Ohio State, San Diego State, Creighton, Texas Tech, Arkansas, Cincinnati, no, Loaded Field. No. Okay. I would Arkansas. take the field over any one team in that. Have to. I take the field probably over any two teams. It's a loaded field. All right. Couple more. Arkansas. They're in Maui. They open with Louisville, Texas Tech, or Creighton on the other side of the bracket. Then all they have is Oklahoma and Tulsa on December 10th. Look, GP, Arkansas. They've got Maui, Oklahoma, and Tulsa, and then at Baylor. Five games of no. And really, it's only four because Louisville and Maui, I wouldn't say even qualifies this season year one under Kenny Payne. Kind of surprising for a Hogs team in the SEC can compete to win the SEC championship. Arkansas regular season total wins with that in mind. What are you saying? 
25 and six. Ooh, how about this? I think this is my third most aggressive one. I'm going to say Arkansas goes 27 and five this season. I'm a believer in the roster, and there's not enough on the non com where I think they're going to pile it up there. Okay. Three more. Auburn. How about this? They've got a decent array of mid majors. They're going to play St. Louis, Memphis, and Atlanta. They're at USC, at Washington, at West Virginia. I'm going 21 and 10 for Bruce Pearl's Tigers. I think they lost a ton. This is a challenging non-conference schedule and a really good SEC. I actually think Auburn takes a relatively big step back. 23 and 8. Baylor corresponded with Scott Drew this very morning. They start the season. Baylor's going to play the first game of the season. Did you know that? The very first game. They tip off at 11 local against Mississippi Valley State. I said, why do you do that? How about this? He said, because we bring all of the local elementary schools to come there. They get to watch the game. They get the college experience from an early age. We want to set them on the right path to say, like, college is something you should aspire to, want to go to, right? So they bring in, you know, dozens and dozens of elementary school uh, students to be able to come watch the game early. Then they can get back to school in time to catch the bus home. I think that's pretty awesome. Not a game of note, but Baylor will be the first game of this season. Here are the ones to note. Virginia and Vegas. Then they'll get either UCLA or Illinois two days later in Vegas in November. They're going to be at Marquette. This is GP. This is insane. Virginia, then UCLA or Illinois, two teams that top 25, top 30 level at Marquette versus Gonzaga and South Dakota versus Washington State in Dallas and then versus Arkansas on January 29th. About as interesting of a non-conference as any team we talked about in our summer shoot around. Yeah, that's tough. That's a lot. That is. I'm going to go. I struggled with this number. Yeah, I'm going to go. I'm going to go 22 and nah, I'm going to go 23 and eight, but good enough to at least share the big 12 title. I'm going to go 24 and seven. And I almost went 23. The only reason why I'm going 24. No, okay. Let me, let me go. Let me go. Let, let me what, what? I want to go. Tw- what did you just go? 24. I almost went 23. The only reason why I'm going 24 is I think Keontae George might be the freshman of the year. Okay. I would like to revise. Okay. Revise. I would like to go 24 and seven. All right. So we're on the same. I almost went 23. And I was like, Ugh. I don't, I just don't want, I don't want anybody in the Drew family thinking that you love them more than I love them. Okay. Fair enough. Last one, Creighton. Last one we didn't do. And I appreciate you going through this exercise so I can be complete about this. They have seven games of note. That's as much as any team we talked about. Tech, they're all they're also in Maui. It feels like there's 25 teams in Maui. Literally every team we talked about in the summer shoot around uh, is in Maui, except for San Diego State. Sorry, Aztec fans. Uh, they'll play Texas Tech. Then they'll get Louisville, Arkansas, then the other side of the bracket with all the other teams we talked about before. They're going to go at Texas December 1st. December 4th, they're playing Nebraska. That's a home game for Creighton. They'll play BYU in Vegas on December 10th. Two days later, they'll play Arizona State in Vegas. And then... They're going to play a Christmas game against DePaul. That's a league game. It's, it's only of note because I was told that the Big East and Fox wanted to have a Big East game on Christmas, and the only two teams that were willing to do it were Creighton against DePaul, December 25th. Santa says hello. You've got Creighton winning the Big East. Got them highly ranked. Go back and listen to that Blue Jays summer shoot around if you have not already. Very intriguing team. What's your over-under on the Blue Jays regular season win total here? 25 and 6. By the way... Ooh. I would not play on Christmas either if I were college basketball. I agree. Like what? Like you're going up against the NFL and the NBA, so you, you're not getting this national pop that you think you're getting. People are watching the NBA and the NFL, or like you know, being with their families. Like taking people away from their family. I don't care. I'm not outraged by it. It doesn't yeah, matter yeah. to me at all. I'm not trying to criticize anybody. I'm just saying. But taking players away from their families and coaches and staffs away from their families. Um, just to get this game that, you know, relatively, you know, relatively speaking, will just be completely overshadowed by Christmas itself, plus the NFL, plus NBA. I just, I don't know if it's, uh, I don't know if it's worth it. I, my guess, I don't know. I don't have the schedule in front of me. My guess is Fox has a Christmas day game and this is going to lead into it. And so the number itself will validate having it scheduled on that day. Cause it's at Christmas and it's NFL or whatever, but I'm with you hundred percent on that. What was your number? 25, 25 and six. I will go, man, 
I'm going to go 23 and 8 for Creighton. I'm going to go 23 and 8. Echo back what I said on that on that show. I do think they'll be a good team. I'm not sold on them winning the Big East. Those are all of our over unders. I will post them eventually so you can look at them and uh, and see where we're at there. And that is the Bellerman portion. I cannot wait to get this mailbag. GP, take it away. You you sure are a completist. That's right.